Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of the Battle of the App Frameworks. This time we will create a web application by using Python only. No HTML, no CSS and most certainly no JavaScript. Pure Python only. So today we will build a simple calculator by using a really cool framework called Anvil. Now, originally I was planning to create the exact same Hello World app we created with Flask, but since it took only a couple of minutes to build, and since it didn't really showcase the true powers of Anvil, I decided we should build something slightly more useful instead. So we will begin by navigating to anvil.works, or you can simply click on the special link in the description. Now, since I already have a free account, I will simply click on the Start Building button, I am going to select the new blank app option. Since I am planning to create our own special kind of template, I will scroll down and I will select the costume HTML option. Additionally, we will select the blank panel option and we can begin designing our interface. Now, one of the ways we can do this with Anvil is to simply drag and drop whichever components we'd like into the interface itself. So, for example, if we are looking for a logo, we will simply drag the image component all the way to the top of our application and we can set some basic properties to this component by scrolling a little below. So, through the source property, we can upload whichever image we'd like from our computer. So, if we will click on this upload button, we will select the logo I previously created for this application and now it's being displayed on the page. If we would like to edit the size of this image, we will scroll even lower and we will edit the height property from the height of 200 to a height of, let's say, 75. And since most of my logo is white, we will obviously need to select a different background color. So we will simply click on the form component and we will select a background of hashtag 000, which is black. Now, one of the most important components in a calculator is an input field. For this, we will drag and drop the text box component and we will place it right below our logo. Go away, Chrome, you're drunk. But now the only issue is everything looks very crowded. So let's space it out. We will simply drag and drop the space or the spacer component and we will place it first at the very top of our application. We will edit the height of this spacer from 32 to 30 because I am very specific and we will then add some more spacing below the logo. This time we would like it to be a 10 pixel spacing. We can then copy this spacer element with control C and we can paste it below our input field with control V. So we are essentially using graphic design tools to create an application which is incredible, but that's not the only way we can add new elements to our interface. We can actually do it with code as well. Next, we will add our buttons. Now, because we have 18 of them, it makes much more sense to code them rather than to drag and drop them into the interface. So we will select the code editor where we can already see some basic commands. So we see that we are dealing with a class that has an init method, which we are already familiar with. But if you guys are not sure what a class is, what the init method is, what is self, definitely check out my class tutorials in the description. And we will begin by creating a list of characters to represent our buttons. Now, in my case, I will store it in a local variable called chars as in characters, and we will assign it to a list of strings where we arrange these strings in the exact same order we want to see our buttons appear on the page. So for example, we start with one, followed by two, followed by three, followed by four, and then we jump to D, which is delete, and C, which is clear. And this represents the top row of buttons. In the next row, we will have five, we will have six, seven, and eight, and we will add a plus and a minus arithmetic operators. Then in the next row, we will finish with nine, zero, a dot, 
so we can make calculations with floating point numbers as well. Then we will include an asterisk for multiplication and we will include a division sign as well as an equality sign. Next, I am planning to loop over these strings and use them to create button components. Now for this, we will need to create an empty dictionary to store these buttons. So we will call this dictionary self.btn, as in button, and we will assign it to a set of curly brackets, which is an empty dictionary. Additionally, since we want to arrange these buttons in rows and columns, we will need a grid. So we will create a grid panel in camel case, and we will assign it to a local variable called gp, grid panel. And now we can place our buttons inside this grid. So for i in chars, we will create a brand new dictionary key with self.btn in the key of i, where i represents a different character time after time. And we will then assign this dictionary key to a value of button in camel case with the text of i as well. Now this command only creates the button element, but we also need to place it inside the grid. So in the next line, we will type gp, which is our grid panel, add component, where in our case, the component is self.button in the key of i. Next, we will specify the row name, which I will assign to a, at least at first. And then we can move on with call underscore extra small, which represents the first column where we start drawing our buttons. Now, in my case, I want to start from column number three, which is the fourth column out of 12. And then lastly, we specify the width extra small argument, which represents the number of columns each element takes up. So in my case, I'm going to go for one. Now this command will add all our buttons to the grid, but we will also need to add the grid itself to the interface. So what we will do is we will leave the for loop and we will type self dot add component and we will specify GP. And now we can go ahead and run this code. And we will of course also name the app. We will call it calculator app and let's go ahead and rename it. And here's our beautiful application with all the different buttons we have just added. And we will obviously need to arrange them nicely and we will need to make them prettier. But for now, let's take care of their functionality. So my plan is to collect the value of the button we clicked on. Now we can easily do this with a tag property. So we will type self.btn in the index of i, which is our button. And we will add dot tag dot name, and we will assign it to I, which represents our current character. And once we have stored this tag name, we can then access it during a click event. So let's go ahead and create a click method, and then we can connect it to all our buttons. So we will go to the very, very bottom of our code. We will exit the init method, and we will define the click method. So click takes in the self parameter as well as the event arguments. And then we can collect our tag name by typing event args in the key of sender dot tag dot name. And at first we will simply print this expression just to make sure everything works. And once we have a click method, we can then assign it to our buttons. So right before we add our buttons to the grid, we will type self.btn in the key of i.set event handler. In our case, we would like to handle the click event and we would like to attach the self.click method to this event. So let's have a quick look to see if everything works. We will click on run. We will expand the output bar so we can see the printed messages. And then we can start pressing on buttons. So let's say five, five is printed. Let's say seven, seven is printed and so on. And once our buttons return the correct value, we can then concatenate it to our text box. 
For this, we will expand the Code Snippets tab and we will select the text box element. Now, if we scroll a little below, we see all the available properties of our text box. Now, since we are interested in displaying text, we are interested in the text property. So what we will do is we will copy the name of our text box from the example, and we will use it inside our click method. So instead of just printing our tag name, we will concatenate it to our text box with plus equals, and let's have a quick look to see if it worked. So we will press on run. We don't need the output anymore. And we can now start clicking on buttons and see what happens. So we'll click on five. Five was concatenated. We'll click on six. Six was concatenated. And the more buttons we click, the longer our text box string becomes. Now it's all rainbows and butterflies when we're dealing with numbers and arithmetic operators. But we have a few buttons here that have a special functionality such as clear button, the delete button, and the equality sign button. So let's go back to our code and add some special functionality to them. To make our lives slightly easier, we will create a local variable called val, and we will assign it to the tag name we have just collected from our button. So if val equals the equality sign, then we would like to evaluate the expression we see in the text box. To do this, we will simply use the eval method and we will paste the text from our text box inside it. So what the eval method will do is it will take our very long string, it will turn it into a mathematical operation and it will return the results. Now, additionally, I would also like to display these results inside our text box. So we will simply reassign this expression to our text box. Now, in case we want to click on the clear button, we will need to create an else if clause. So else if val equals C, we will then reassign the text of our text box to an empty string because C clears everything. And then in the case we would like to delete one of the characters, we will use an else if statement as well. So else if val equals D, we will then slice off the last character and we will do this by selecting all the characters, excluding the last one, which is represented with minus one. Then we can reassign this expression to our text box text and we are almost done. So the last thing left to do is to take care of the else clause which represents all the numeric values and all the arithmetic operations, excluding the equality sign. So we will indent this expression and our click method is complete. So let's go ahead and run this code. Again, we don't need the output and let's start pressing on buttons. So if we do two plus two, we press on the equality sign, we get four. Perfect. If we add a bunch of eights to four and we click on D, one of the eights is deleted. We click it again, another eight is deleted. Perfect. And then if we click on clear, everything is gone. Awesome. So our calculator is functioning perfectly. Now let's make it prettier. And we will begin by splitting our buttons into three different rows. Now, in my case, I would like to count six buttons and then move to the next row. I will then count another six buttons and we'll move to the very last row. Now, the way to easily do this is to add the enumerate method and to pass our list of characters to it. Now, enumerate returns two different values rather than one. So we will also need to add an additional iteration variable called idx, and this will represent the counting. We can say that if index is smaller than six, then row equals a. However, else if six is greater or equal to index, and it is also smaller than 12, then our row will be called b. But in the case that our index equals to 12 or bigger than 12, then we will add an else clause where the row would be equal to c. Then instead of hard coding A inside our row specification, we will type row, which is our local variable from above. Let's now run this code to see if it worked. 
And yay, we have three different rows, which my head is partially blocking. And we can also style our buttons to make them look prettier. So after we specify the text value, we will add the font value of consolas, at least in my case. We will set it to be bold, with bold equals true. And I will also set the font color, also known as foreground, to be white, with FFF. And lastly, I would like to set different background colors to different buttons. And we will use a very similar strategy to our row split. So instead of hard coding a background color value, we will assign background to a local variable which we haven't defined yet called CLR, color. And then right at the top of our for loop, we will say if i equals the equality sign, then our color would equal green. And I believe you guys already know by now that I am very particular with my colors. So we will not just leave it at green, we will actually go to Adobe Illustrator, which is where I designed the wireframes and the prototypes of my apps. And I will select the green that I've already chosen. So if I expand the fill color right over here, we can copy the hash value of this color and we can paste it inside our app, our web app. So instead of green, we will type hashtag and then the value we just copied. However, else if i is in a list with c or d, we will then select the color to be pink. Additionally, else if i is in... Sorry guys, my cat is losing his mind. So if i exists inside a list with the plus operator, with the minus operator, with multiplication, division. So if i is any of these, I would like my color to be purple. And then in the else clause, if our button is none of these, we will set the color to light purple. Okay, and I believe we are done with all the colors. So let's go ahead and run this. And look at these beautiful, colorful buttons. They look amazing. Now let's go ahead and test the functionality of this calculator. So if we press on one minus eight, we get minus seven, which is great because this means we have the ability to deal with negative numbers. And if we choose to divide the results, let's say by two, we get minus three and a half which also means we are dealing with floating point numbers. But what happens if we want to collect input through the keyboard and not through these buttons? We can simply click on the text box and we will add five. Let's see if it works. Perfect. So we can either use the keyboard or we can click on a bunch of buttons. One way or another, we are always getting the results we're looking for. And because I am extra picky, I will also add some spacing underneath our buttons. Now the objective here is to cover our entire web page with black background. Now you guys may have probably noticed that the interface looks slightly differently. And that's because I'm using the new version of the Anvil editor. And once we are happy with our application, we can then go ahead and deploy it. Now the way to do this with Anvil is to simply press on the publish button followed by a press on the publish this app button. And that's it. Our application is finally online. Now, as an additional step, I will also change the URL to something a bit more calculator related, and I will call it calculator888, just because I have a feeling that calculator is already taken, and we will press on save. And then once we navigate to our new URL, we see that we have successfully deployed our application, it is finally online, it is beautiful, and we can share it with anybody we'd like. Now, thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial useful, please share it with as many people as you can. You can always also leave me a like, leave me a comment, or subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. I will see you guys very soon in a brand new tutorial, so don't go too far.